So there seems to be some anxiety among my friends who purchase new camper trailers and you guys in the comment section wondering what's the first things you need to buy, what do you need to do to be prepared to show up and grab that trailer on the first day and then transition into getting it on the road. So obviously that's what this video is going to be about today. So this is one of those things I don't like to talk about, but I do need to put this scenario out there. So let's say you pick up your small camper trailer and God forbid on the way home, it comes off the hitch because you know this is new to you or somehow it got in an accident. You turn in that claim to your insurance company and it's not covered because it's not part of your fleet. Uh, I have never insured a trailer, but many of you have told me this is the number one thing you do when you buy a trailer. I've been told that companies like Geico and State Farm often will insure a trailer like this. Um, it differs from state to state, so check your local agency. Even my home-built teardrop back in Alaska, some states will insure that as well. So I think that's a good way of having a bit of peace of mind knowing that investment you just put in isn't going to just disappear overnight. And I typically, when it comes to insurance, do that whole, what is it, like five, maybe $11 per six months to have roadside assistance. I'm a half hour from the Canadian border and look at this. Can you hear this? Can you see this? Because it just, again, gives you peace of mind knowing when something stressful happens out there, um, especially when you're pulling a new trailer and this is all new to you, uh, gives you some calm out there as well. Um, if I just picked up a trailer and I was going to do a long trip with it across the country, I'd up my ante and do like a AAA or Good Sam. Before I move on, my name is Drew. Welcome to Playing With Sticks. We take out small camper trailers throughout the country to help you to just have a more simple and gratifying camping experience. With these tips and tricks, if that's something you're into, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. So even if you got a screaming deal on your small little camper trailer, there's still a lot of money per square foot, if, you're, if we're being honest with ourselves. And so the last thing we want is for somebody to run off with our new camper trailer that we sunk some money into. For those of you who don't know in this community, Mandy Lee was just about to go out on a big adventure going full time in the teardrop and she had it stolen. She was on the news, the community came around her, everybody was out looking for her teardrop. So we don't want this to happen. So obviously we're going to need locks. I have an entire video I'll put in the description, I'll put a card up here for you, but it talks about our redundant lock systems, what type of locks you need. One lock I did not mention in that video was the bolt lock. I've been really researching it and I think it's a neat lock in that it uses your car ignition. So that means one less key to haul around with you. And they say that they cannot be picked with the mechanisms they have in them. I will, spoiler alert here, if you look around the internet, there are some videos where people did pick them. Um, but again, if you see my other video, it's really not about pickability, but more about redundancy and pushing someone away from your campground for an easier target. So if you didn't have a bunch of redundant systems, let me show you how easy it is to steal a trailer. You could break off the lock to the receiver hitch. You can quickly break off this lock and then this ball comes right out. Or you can even take this whole coupler here and just, un just loosen these bolts and it'll come right off. And if they bring another coupler with them, they put the coupler on, bolt it up, and then they can hook it right up to their tow vehicle. Okay, we're coming back to the hitch again. And no, it is not to show you how I dry my clothes on the tongue box. It is to talk about leveling your trailer. So what I would do, I would reach out to the manufacturer or the owner of the trailer you're purchasing and ask them at what height is your coupler when the trailer is level. That way you can measure the hitch, the ball hitch on your tow vehicle when it's level and decide if you need a drop hitch, a rise, or an adjustable hitch because once you get these two even, you're going to have much more clearance when you're towing and you're going to have a better towing experience overall. So a mistake I've made one too many times is showing up expecting the coupler on the trailer to receive my two inch ball and come to find it's a completely different ball size. And that's a horrible feeling because that means you're going back home without your trailer in tow. So that's as easy as giving a call to the manufacturer and saying, hey, what ball size do I need to put 
on this hitch so I can get this trailer home. So simple, but it's something I forget to do. And to help you determine if your trailer's level, for just like $3 off Amazon or your local RV place, you can get yourself a bubble level. This way you're going to know if you're balanced left or right, front to back. We're like slightly tilted, right? So maybe we need to drive more up the loft. But we'll get it for dinner, after dinner. Okay. So next I'm going to suggest you pick yourself up some chocks. Those are, they're kind of like triangles that you shove underneath the wheels so that the trailer doesn't roll forward or back when you disconnect it from your tow vehicle. So that in combination with your tongue being on the ground will keep it in place. And then while you're at it, you might want to pick up some blocks of wood to be used as a way to level your camper or pick up a leveling kit like we did. So now for towing this thing around, it's smaller, the tongue length is less on it than typical trailers that you may have towed before. So I would, the very first thing when I get this trailer, before I even try to get it home, I would go to the nearest parking lot. And that's going to allow you to park in a calm fashion when nobody's looking at you. Obviously going to an empty parking lot. And that way you can practice pulling in, you know, doing kind of a 90 degree turn, practice backing up, the long backing up, kind of the winding. That's probably the toughest thing when you have a trailer like this. And just work on getting your mirrors right, getting comfortable with using your side mirrors versus looking over your shoulders or your rear view mirror. Um, and the more you do it, the more comfortable and safer you'll be on the road. Mama, Did you get it? Because I wasn't watching my trailer. And I forgot to mention, when I am talking to new trailer owners, I like to suggest a video from Long Long Honeymoon. They have a backup method that they use for getting into campsites. I think they call it the swoop. Uh, it allows you to make an angle that already initiates the turn with your trailer before you even start. So when you start backing in, it's much easier. Here's what happens when you pass a campsite in a flat, parallel fashion and then try to back into it. But all of that violence and carnage could have been avoided if only the driver had used the scoop. So I'll put that video in the description below. I think that'll help a lot of you out. Ooey gooey goodness. You got that belly tucked in? Huh? Too many tacos. A little bit more and that's it. So I know we all want to go big on that first trip. We have these grandiose ideas of where we're going to go. But if I could help you have the best trip ever, I would suggest staying close to home. You, even May and I, when we go out every year for our annual first trip, there's always something we forget. And we always camp close to home. That way we can come back and get it. Or after the first night or two, we can just scrap the trip, start over, rebalance our systems and our organization, and go again. There's nothing worse than getting out there deep into your destination and everything goes wrong. That's a good way to spoil your first trip and maybe even spoil your view of your small camper trailer. You don't, you gotta start off on the right foot with these because you're gonna love the experience if you do it right. All right, so I have a couple great videos for you. The first one is how to stay safe when out camping and boondocking like this. We've had no issues, but these tips and tricks will just make you feel a little more secure when you're first getting out. And then the other one is that lock video I told you about, helping you secure and keep this investment so somebody else doesn't run off with it. And then as usual, thanks guys for sticking around. Safe travels out there, and we'll see you in the next episode.